Okay, we're good to go. We'll call the meeting to order. Record of attendance. Um, Wade is excused, and I see Don coming in. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Uh, declarations of conflict of interest, anyone? Understanding you can. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, additions or deletions? So I had two additions. Um, we'll start under at 10. 10A, accessible parking and 10B, which we might get to earlier, um, priority setting meeting. <coughs> okay, so I'm gonna put webcam as 10C. And your worship uh, window, maybe the one. Window? Yeah, the one Win those big barrels of property. On. Window under 10D? Yeah. Anything else? Anyone we'll can think of? the agenda with the addition, Your Worship. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Thank you, folks. Okay, presentation. Facade video. You're right at the beginning. This is so exciting. So I'm going to go to presentation here. Yeah, nice and loud. So, uh, Mike and myself and a leader of the production company called Aerial Bridge worked on the facade video. And thank you for those that attended the input session and the discussion with the mayor for being honest. <laughs> and so, we'd like, we'd like to present this video and I hope it demonstrates. Okay, so that clears that up because I didn't know which one I was doing. Yeah, you're being the four. Okay, good, thank you. So Mike, while that's getting started, you input into my PowerPoint, you input both, right?
I think we're quiet because it's hard to put into words how awesome that is. It, it's just, it's amazing. Sent it to who? Oh, yes, he kissed it. Wonderful. Go ahead there, Phil. Oh, yeah, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Mike, or Natalie, uh, like you, you, you think of the projects when you, when you go down the street, then you see the one-offs, right? And you don't really think about it, but when you, you put the whole collection together, it's quite impressive. But uh, the people that you worked with, and we had a great conversation in behind with them, do you see Mike or do you see Natalie another opportunity to do, I know Steve, uh, is doing the Jay Strong Hockey Tournament this weekend. We got the, you see a, a, a collage or maybe a, 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 a building of a video bank, building of a photo bank that we can use to entice professionals, businesses, uh, or do, they, do these people that we worked with have any other ideas of, of what they could provide us or what we could ask of them? Because I, I was really impressed with the uh, the way they thought and the way they spoke in, inside there, they were really, really good. gentleman with Ariel Ridge he's captured a bit of those images but um, I definitely think that you know the things like Nathan Bain and others uh, from Gaia Foods pulling those together uh, people in recreation just you know someone that uh, you know in the playground I mean it, again it's privacy but I think definitely that's something we need to move forward and do it helps with relocation as well. People thinking to relocate to our community. Good. Jim. Go ahead, Jim. I just want to say thank you very much again. And whenever we make application for grants for projects or activity throughout our town, that would be a neat item to include in the application process. Um, I think it's outstanding and uh, and again, thanks and congratulations. First of all, I'd just like to say great job, but I think secondly, um, to have that done by someone in our own community, to not have to go outside to Halifax, you know, Mikey Smith right from Yarmouth High, and you know, I think that speaks to kind of where we're going, you know, working out of Ignite Labs down there, and just great job all around, just a community thing, all inclusive of Yarmouth, so great job. So first thing I wanted to say was uh, I was critical of expanding the f facade program of Pleasant Street in a previous meeting. And so I went out and saw the owners of Pleasant Supplies because I suspected or thought maybe that was, I didn't get an answer as to what the source of that was other than from staff. And when I, I met with Brian and saw what he's doing, um, he informed me that he had applied to the town something like two years ago. So that was, it was his application two years ago that spurred staff to bring that forward. Any staff that would think that I was critical, I was being critical because I was wondering whether staff was overreaching in terms of doing it on their own initiative as opposed so. Uh, I mean, when I looked at that, the only viable section of Pleasant Street 
for the facade program is that section between parade and forest, I think, in my opinion. And um, so I want to comment on that aspect. The other part is this is downtown merchants paid huge amounts of tax, taxes for many, many years. They paid taxes long before there were shopping centers on Stairs Road. Where did the money come from to build all the infrastructure that allowed the shopping centers to build? It came from the tax base from the downtown. And this has been, this has been needed for so long to reinvest in our downtown. It's been a huge reinvestment by the town and I think it's well worthwhile and it's been a great program. And, I mean, obviously it's a great program, but here's what's really great about it. There was no master plan for this. This individuals had their own ideas about what they wanted to do approached the committee, got the funding, and went and did their thing. And it's the individual store owners and, and uh, operators who deserve the credit because their money's in this too. It's not just the town's money. So thank you for the opportunity to speak, Your Worship. Good. Anyone else? Okay. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> All right. Staff report. CAO report. Any questions for the CAO? Your Worship, I just wanted to acknowledge that my report only got uploaded, I think, this morning. That's uh, my, my fault. I got it done late, so uh, you may not have had a chance to have a look at it, but if there are any questions about items that Council has, uh, has brought forward uh, in the past, they would be in my report, and I'd be happy to, uh, to speak to them if there's any questions. Thank you. Go ahead there, Phil. So, Your Worship, I have a question for the CAO. Um, uh, at a recent meeting of the airport uh, corporation, uh, we received the uh, financial statements for approval. And uh, we noted, and we, it was explained to us by Grant Thornton representatives that there are modifications to the reporting standards that the uh, um, accounting industry has to apply. And, it speaks to the responsibilities of board members of corporations like the airport corporation uh, to manage the corporation on an oncoming basis. Now, we have an expired tri-county agreement between Argyle, Yarmouth Town, and the municipality of Yarmouth to fund the corporation. It has been extended twice, and I pointed out in our meeting that we were beyond the date of the last extension. And therefore, I indicated that to, I asked the question of the uh, Grant Thornton, would it be appropriate, how, how could it be appropriate for us to approve as a corporation and as directors the financial statements that are being presented and comply with the new accounting standards that are a national standard? As a result of that, the uh, financials for the corporation were withdrawn temporarily until further action could be taken to resolve and hopefully reach an agreement um, between the three municipal units to ensure that funding is available to the corporation going forward and thereby the corporation can and its directors can abide by the uh, ab abide by their responsibilities in approving the financials. So I, uh, I'd, I'd ask the CEO for a status update because there is a G September 30th deadline with respect to the reporting because the corporation is one of the entities funded by the town. The town and the other two municipality municipal units have to sign off on theirs um, by the 30th and if we're not signed off on the corporations as I understand it, it may present some difficulties in signing off on the, the municipal the overall thing. So I'll leave it with the CAO for an update. Bill, you're gonna, do you have yep. a question first? No, no, I'll let go to Jeff. Jeff. Okay, go ahead. To answer Mr. Hood's question. Uh, Your Worship, the CAOs, um, so just okay. back up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> the CAOs have been working uh, under direction of our councils to um, renegotiate the the airport agreement it had expired back in the spring uh, you'll recall we did have a meeting at Mariner Center where we brought the three councils together because there were some points that we were quite divided on and we felt that we needed um, you folks around the table to understand those issues and, and discuss them the out 
outcome of that meeting at Mariner Center was that certain things were not going to be uh, negotiated within the airport agreement, but would be deferred and negotiated at a later date and would apply to more than just the airport agreement. So those things included the funding formula, uh, whether or not there would be tax sharing and, and other items like that. So our task was to, was to get back to the table and uh, work out the, the details uh, of the agreement, which by the way does include an option for the, for the town of Yarmouth to purchase uh, certain lands. Um, so we've, we've met as recently as last week to uh, finalize that and I think we did, I think between the three of us we reached agreement on, on all matters within the agreement. So from there it went to uh, John Cumming who was present at the meeting at Mariner Center and who's a solicitor who's been uh, contracted by the airport for this specific purpose. Uh, John has our, our notes and, the, and uh, the draft agreement to come back to us with a, a final draft for your approval. The hitch that we have, and, and Councillor Hood spoke to this, is that uh, we need to get this done by the 30th of this month. That's next Tuesday. We don't have another meeting scheduled right now, and I don't have that copy of the draft in hand in order to say definitively that we, we, we have something for you to look at. I would suggest that it would be a good idea to plan for a special council meeting for next Tuesday, if that date works, next Monday if necessary, but give us every day we possibly can because again, I don't have the draft in hand and I think you'll want to have it in hand and a chance to read it before you're asked to approve it. So uh, that's where we are. Uh, our work is, is almost done, um, but uh, not quite there yet. Thank you. Um, Okay, go ahead, Bill. Can you put this? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Jeff, what a, what's the story on, still drive around town to see a few branches and trees. What's the status on the cleanup of uh, some of the limbs and some of the other things? Okay. Uh, your Worship, uh, <laughs> Chad, is, Chad is, uh, has come in. This is his day off. This is what Chad does on his day off. So uh, since he's here uh, and has done us that favor, I'd ask him to respond. Um, status is it's going fairly slowly. Um, we are at probably Parade Street today. We started in the south end of town. We're working our way north. I suspect we'll be at a Stars Road by the end of the week, um, and we should finish up. Um, sometime in the middle of next week. Uh, as the days go by, the piles are increasing in numbers and volume. I saw, I saw, uh, yeah, I saw one that had a significant amount uh, more than it did like a yeah, week ago. Yeah. Which we knew would happen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah we had this discussion beforehand, yeah. so yeah, we knew this was gonna, yeah, some, some people are taking advantage and trimming their property, but it is what it is at this point. Um, and we've reached out, we have one contractor working on it right now, and I've reached out to other, I tried to get it like an industrial size chipper, um, but of course they were all tied up with the utilities, so we may get some assistance next, next week, but um, I suspect we'll be to Stars Road by the end of this week. And Your Worship, I did see, uh, thank you, I did see uh, only a few hours after the storm kind of abated a little bit, I did see Chad and Todd were out monitoring everything like uh, yourself and Jeff wrote at the public work shed and I did see those guys were <coughs> everywhere on, on the on the day after the storm so yeah um, I you did a great job I, I, I have to say um, we went through Arthur a few years ago and this one was night and day that mm -hmm. this was I don't know <coughs> if I've ever seen anything cleaned up so fast everything come together and that's I mean, I know you said thank you to your staff, but yes. from all of us, thank you to yeah. your staff. It, it was just amazing to watch that. I mean, I was, I was almost in shock because you can't do that much work in that short amount of time, but apparently you guys can. Yeah, no, I'll commend <laughs> so, the crews, both public works and, yeah. and park staff. They did a yeah. fantastic job. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. And, and uh, Nova Scotia Power was actually faster than, you know, given yeah. what they had to deal with. Yeah. 
Boy, it was a good one. So we are going to um, have a task team meeting tomorrow. Just, um, we're going to discuss a few things, but including, and this has nothing to do with, with you guys maybe, but just have a discussion on how we can pair people up that, that feel a little bit unsafe in this kind of situation with maybe families that are willing to open their doors because it wasn't, um, because it wasn't an emergency, mm -hmm. uh, but some people felt that it was. And it's yeah. not whether you feel it is or not, it's just, yeah. it's, it's what it is. So we're gonna try to, to pull something together to make sure everybody feels safe and, and there's a place to go. And um, yeah, and the information came out, thanks to Mike, like everything was just, it rolled through really nicely. We had a face, uh, we had a text team set up yeah, because group, the email yeah. was down and it, stuff was down so we had a text group set up so we knew everything every step of the way so I think it worked really really well really well so communities in bloom this week at least they'll know we really did have a storm because <laughs> yes, of the branches right. but you can only do what you can do thanks Chad okay, okay good okay so on that um, Let's go backwards, thanks for that, Phil, um, to, to um, Councillor Cliff's point. Should we do that meeting, do you think? Jeff, what do you? Yeah, so what, can you tell me why the drop dead date? I need, just need a gentle reminder. Our, uh but all three municipalities have an obligation on the Municipal Government Act to finalize their financial statements. That's it, the financial statements. By September 30th. That's it. And consequently, uh, a, a corporation that they fund must have its statements uh, yeah. completed before our statements are validated. Yeah. I think that's, in a nutshell, you could, if I'm incorrect, Jeff, yeah, please correct me. Yeah, I remember that conversation now because when Gloria yeah. took them back, we said 30th of September, and, so. And so, Your Worship, I'll be very blunt. I'm not a voting member of the corporation, but I am, a, I am permitted to talk, which is their, that's their trouble. <laughs> be nice. But seriously, I've been trying to keep everyone's nose to the grindstone, or whatever, and, and it was a way to do that when we had that meeting, by raising these issues, which were legitimate, frankly, and uh, hopefully it's gonna get us to where we need to be. Yeah. But they're, they're very legitimate. And, and I'll, I'll say this, and, and I've said it before, I don't pretend to be the expert on, on all these pieces. So what's important to us, I've said this to you before, is that someone like you was at that table because we might not catch those things. So I'm gonna throw something at you right now. <laughs> Put your catcher's mitt on. Um, <laughs> I, I would like to step down from the airport and ask if you would step in in my place. You're there, you're there anyway. Um, you can think about it, but... Give me a little time. Okay, that's, I that's fair. Okay, yeah, that's good for you. All right. Yeah. Is everybody okay with a meeting? I have nothing on Monday. That's just, really, I don't like that. Okay. Is that enough time, Jack? Is that enough time? Are the two minutes going to agree to have their meetings in place before I? I expect they'll have to in order for the, for the airport to, well, to meet their obligation. Us meet our obligation. But if we meet our obligation, if we meet our obligation, they don't meet theirs or don't, as Cliff has suggested. Um, Argyle had a meeting last night and Modi has a meeting this, tonight, I, I think. They don't have to agree. No, they don't. So they'll have to do what we're doing. Yeah. They don't, oh, they don't have the agreement? No, I don't think. Okay. Yeah. The world is not going to fall apart. No, no, no but. the world's but, not going to fall apart, but I don't want to call a meeting if everybody else isn't going to have a meeting. We've got to. Here's the point. Yeah, okay. We can't flinch. We've got to get the agreement clinched between the three municipal units. And if we blink, 
you know, it'll be a, this, we need to bring it to a head. Yeah. It is important, I, very I, important. I, I, I hope Grant Thornton, well, I know they agree, so yeah. thank you. So, okay. So as chair of the airport, maybe it would be incumbent upon me to send a note out and just say, this is what we've done. Um, that's the best we can do. Okay, what time on Monday? Anybody, everybody good Monday? What time on Monday is good? You guys. Won't take long, will it? Just cancel. Okay, so it's either um, it's either nine o'clock in the morning or it's noon. I get, I get, I get that's an activation that uh, I'm, I'm thinking your worship. Uh, three? In the afternoon, say three o'clock. Three o'clock? Um, yeah, I'll be all right. Dawn? Does she have a child? Let's see. Or even at 11 o'clock. That'll give more time to get this thing fine. Yeah, it'll you give us another full day. Okay, Jim, Phil, you good with nine? Or at three? Let's do three o'clock on Monday afternoon. Um, and Lindsay can send that out, but remember our emails are, off the, I think our internal emails are good though. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay, who made that motion? Did you make that motion for three o'clock? Don, okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Good, Jeff, anything else on that? One. Yep. So Councillor McLeod just asked what is what is going on with the email anyway so um, in in I'll give it to you in the technical terms that I understand the server is broken okay so what's happening today is we've we've got the assistance we have Steve Goldring who's on a contract with us but we also have uh, Mike the uh, the IT person from the district of Yarmouth has been made available to help to assist because some work has to be done on every desktop apparently to get to get us uh, up and running again so it'll be a day or two uh, before we're fully functioning apparently our emails between one another from town of Yarmouth to town of Yarmouth domains are working it's receipt and you can send emails but receiving emails from outside is is almost non-existent it i have seen some sporadically come in but you can't depend on it and so we're trying as as quickly as we can to get it to get it fixed mike is a good guy yeah he's excellent he's yeah that's good okay so <coughs> anything else for the cao report fire department report mm -hmm. go ahead Sorry, Your Worship, but there was um, there was another item before you go into fire department report, and it is. Too late. A <laughs> Thank you. No, <laughs> uh, it's a strategic update report that yes, was circulated yes. on your desk. It looks like PowerPoint slides, and it is meant to give you an update from each of the department heads in terms of the, the things we identified back in our. Our uh, in February with uh, with Gordon McIntosh just to give you an update and sort of where those things are. Excellent. And so it's uh, it's there for you to digest. Many of the things that are in here will be touched upon by staff as they're pre presenting their reports mm -hmm. uh, this morning. Okay. Take it away, and if you have any questions about any of the items within it, uh, mm -hmm. by all means ask me or the or the appropriate director. Perfect. Okay. That's by. By no means is this all encompassing. Oh, no, no. These are only top two or <laughs> yeah, three or five exactly. items, but there's a lot more. Yeah. Uh, but Do these were that. things that were identified in that context, and I want to make sure on a quarterly basis that you get a specific update on those. Good stuff. Thank you. Okay, fire department. Um, just on the fire, okay. You're going to mention. <coughs> So what I was going to mention is that we currently have a search underway for a for a new fire chief. I understand that we have a uh, um, a considerable number of applications, and uh, we've engaged Jerry Walsh and Associates to assist us in this process. He's uh, in the process of doing his first level of screening before he brings us a short list, and uh, so we're we're waiting that. In the meantime, 
uh, operations are continuing at the fire hall. Uh, I met with uh, one of our platoon chiefs um, on the weekend actually to go over uh, their priority items, which are the, the air cleaning system within the, uh, the fire hall. And that project was uh, tendered and awarded and engineering is gonna assist us in the, in the uh, implementation, which may start as early as next week. Uh, the other item was the, uh, the replacement of uh, the CBSAs, the, C no, that's not the right term, CB, CBA, um, the breathing apparatus. So okay. those, uh, those is time to replace those. Uh, we can do that over a, uh, over a three year period. That was Chief Farrell's plan. So we've uh, made application through our volunteer fire department for funding from the province to assist with that process this year. As soon as we hear back from, uh, from that application, we're ready to go and start to implement the, uh, the purchase of, of some of those new bottles. Uh, I did talk um, uh, with, uh, with our fire inspector and he's one of the union representatives. Uh, yesterday we were talking on, on a particular file but it led to a discussion about our volunteers and, uh, and possible changes and initiatives that we may undertake in the future to try and bring our volunteer numbers up. Uh, I floated a couple of ideas with him and I think uh, we've got, uh, uh, I guess, the, uh, the foundation for a, uh, an interesting conversation going forward about how we can, how we can build that department together. Steph. And also, uh, I think everybody's aware that on October the 9th, Lindsay, is it? Uh, for the volunteer firefighters and their employers that um, so graciously allow them to leave work and attend fires and, and um, other things with regard to the fire department. So I think we've sent out the invitations and um, that included the, the auxiliary as well because they're a big help. And, and yeah, so we're looking forward to that. So make sure you mark that in your calendars because it's, it's an important one. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, I had a question from <clears throat> some people in the public. They were wondering about uh, fire pits in town. Um, why or why not? And obviously, I just said that I'd ask the question publicly so they can know the answer so I don't have to keep repeating it. Fire pits in town. Go ahead there, Jeff. We've, we've had this. So, uh, yeah, a few <laughs> years ago, uh, Council reviewed this. Uh, this item. So we have a, um, a fire prevention or fire safety bylaw that specifically uh, doesn't permit um, outdoor outdoor burning. And it, every few years, it becomes a question at the council table because residents would like to be able to enjoy that that kind of backyard experience that uh, that um, some that some people enjoy. Um, the last time we discussed it, uh, Chief Farrell provided us with, uh, with some uh, useful information uh, and I can dig that out for you, but it really it was from the, uh, some of it was from the Canadian Councils and Ministers of the Environment and it was uh, a research based uh, position paper that uh, supported the, the ban of, uh, of outdoor burning in, in urban areas and it was for health reasons. The, the, um, the effects of, of breathing in the smoke was felt to be uh, um, obviously not good for good for humans in, in close proximity. Um, there was also an article, uh, I believe it came from Health Canada, that he also included in his report that similarly for health reasons uh, suggested against the practice. And so at that time, council uh, upheld or, or confirmed its bylaw, they, they didn't change it. Um, I can provide you with that information for your consideration. Um, and I guess that's, that's the history, uh, but it is, it is in the context of a bylaw that we, that we don't permit that. Okay. Do I want to what? <laughs> he always teases me because I'm the first one that wants a fire in my backyard. Right? I, uh, I just love a fire, but there's, there's good reasons why we can't. So I purchased a, uh, a propane one, not the same, but you know, we put it in the backyard and gather around it like we do a fire. The hot dogs don't taste the same though. 
<laughs> Jeff always teases me because I love, there's nothing better than a fire, but we, we have to consider all the citizens, so. Okay, so nothing more on fire, we're good. Operational services and Chad's here. Any questions for Chad? <coughs> good. I know. Thank you for everything. No, really, it's, uh, it's a lot, and we appreciate it. Go ahead. Oh, who's, whose light was on? There's Steve, sorry, I didn't see it. Uh, just one question. I've had some questions about the, the new um, Vietnamese restaurant up by the old jail. Uh, a lot of people are talking about parking spots. If it would be able to, to, I don't know if you ever drove up there lately, but people park everywhere, every way. It might be a safety issue or whatnot. I don't know how you look into going about getting parking spots up there, but just something paint it maybe so people can, you know, be a little safer parking good, good spots, right spots. So are you referring to street on street parking? Yeah. And painted stalls, is that? Well, just some citizens around there have their driveways blocked and if right. Couldn't right. get out for 15 minutes and maybe a crosswalk, you know, people running across the road. It just, it's just back there. I mean, good for them, great for business, good to see, but right. it's just some local residents wondering if that was a possibility here. Yeah, I think we received similar complaints when uh, another restaurant opened a couple of years ago, Jeff. Um, yes, right. I mean, it's a, it's a matter of enforcement, I guess. Um, Painted stalls are not going to prevent people from parking in the entrance of driveways. It's it's a common occurrence. So um, I haven't got any specific uh, requests or complaints that came to our office. Um, I really don't know what we can do there. Uh, I believe the land use bylaw changed a few years ago that now we don't require on-site parking for s that type of business. So. Yeah, so the, um, the land use bylaw change that was made a few years ago uh, gave the option, more options for business development all along Main Street. And what we've seen uh, with a couple of restaurants that have, that have opened in, in that, that neighborhood is, uh, is the effect of that bylaw. It allows people to, to start a business, and, uh, which, is, which is a good thing, but it creates additional service demands uh, and, and issues when those businesses are successful. And, and so the parking that, that's happening there is, is uh, uh, it's new because people weren't used to that many cars around. Um, we, can, we can monitor it <coughs> in terms of issues. I know there were issues from at least one place when 468 opened up. Um, we can take a look at it and we can talk to our, to our bylaw enforcement officer <coughs> about including that area in his route if parking stalls were were painted, um, perhaps maybe a, a motion from the Committee of the Whole to have us look into it. We'll ensure it gets on the on the record, and we can uh, we can report back. So, so part of it maybe I'm always looking to Mike, but but part of it is we just need to say maybe through the media, that's a part of it, right? The education piece, although you shouldn't have to educate people not to park in front of people's driveways. But maybe we can do something on that, get, get it out there and just say, be, be aware this is the fine for doing that. Um, it's a start anyway. It, it might not do everything, but it's, it's a start. There's a big vacant lot in back of the old power station on uh, Chester Street. And there's a, big, there's a big vacant lot in back of the jail. <clears throat> just, for, just saying. Yeah, no, you're right. And you know what, people don't want to, they don't well, want to walk just, from Collins well, just Street. No, but if they were fixed up and improved this parking lot, yeah. they'd also serve the museum and the uh, Sports Hall of Fame and all that. And maybe even be an overflow for the Grand Hotel. So, just saying. Yep. So you put, you're jotting that down, right? Yep. Okay. So, all right. So I'm, look, go ahead, Don. I guess my question would be how far, um, how well are these advertised that they can be used? those parking lots that you just mentioned, um, who knows about them. Um, I, I didn't think you were allowed to park in the, in, in the, in, in the jail. I, yeah, I, you know what I mean? Property. So I think there's, there's yeah. some, along that stretch they're going up um, right along where the jail, old jail was, that along that curve, there's, you could park along there, I think, but to say that they're open parking, 
Yeah. Um, we, we really need to push that if that's what we're going to say. Yeah. It will open up a lot of spaces. I agree with you. It's just that I'm not sure how many people know. Can I use that? Okay. You good? I can't see your lights. You yeah, I just wanted to clarify for for Councillor Barry. So right now those those are not parking spots. <coughs> okay. But but I'll look into it and okay. and maybe they can become. But that. To look into the parking availability for citizens of Yarmouth up by the jail area. That good? Yes, sir. All right. Question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary. Motion carried. Yeah. Well, Chad is still here. Um, we had a conversation. I want to talk, bring up the conversation we had with Councillor Cleveland yesterday, just for the benefit of all of Council, in case. They get phone calls or so the question was about um, the um, the areas that were paving uh, Chad and, and his crew uh, along with the engineering folks have identified a number of areas to be paved this year uh, one of the areas uh, uh, that that they're doing and I'm sure you've noticed is uh, uh, Forest Street the question was uh, why aren't we replacing the underground infrastructure why are we paving over a street that probably has old pipes under it and the answer is is that the, the and, and Chad please jump in if, uh, if I get any of this wrong the pipes under that street are old and they may break uh, they may break at some point but the surface of that street was in such a condition that it needed to be um, it needed to be milled and, and capped and that's okay. four street four. you know we can't guarantee that there won't be a water break there next week the week after, the day after, it's paid. We can't guarantee that, but we don't have the funds and it's not our highest priority for the underground infrastructure at this point. So it's a, it's a calculated um, uh, decision to go ahead and mill and cap that street, understanding that we'll probably end up doing a cut to fix a, a water break at some point in the next few years, hopefully not few days, um, but it's better to fix the surface of that road and have it travel, you know, passable in a reasonable state than to just say, well, when we get the money for the underground services, then we'll do it. So that street was in such, it's, it's a busy street, it's a collector street, it's, uh, it's a busy enough street and it was in bad enough shape that it was a, a, a good decision to go ahead and mill and cap, even though we don't have the money and it's not our highest priority today for the underground services. So if you get any questions about that, you know, we probably have, you know, uh, I don't know what percentage of the town has old water and sewer infrastructure that, that could be replaced is past maybe it's engineered life, uh, but through, through uh, good maintenance and good luck, uh, we haven't had to replace it all. Um, you know, we just don't simply have the funds, so we have to prioritize and sometimes we're going to have to do the, the mill and cap uh, over top of uh, infrastructure that we know is is past its uh, engineered life uh, but sometimes you get away with that for for decades and uh, um, so that's where we are our priority project that we have submitted for infrastructure funding for for the underground services is still this lower section of Parade Street and uh, Glebe Street down to water so that we can do stormwater separation get that out of the uh, sanitary system increase our capacity to deal with stormwater, and, uh, and from there we'll, we'll, we'll move forward. Just wanted to share that with you in case you get any questions before the next meeting. So, so the, the numbers, so that folks understand, Brown, Brown Street, Cliff Street was between three and four million because we did that, right? We did just that. So that's the difference between $100,000 and multi-million. It's a, it's a hard one. So, Oops, sorry. Uh, so Chad, correct me if I'm wrong, but on Forest Street, um, I would say a high percentage of the services from our pipes, both water and sewer, to the homes have been fixed up and repaired yeah. over the last, so I mean really, and that's a part of the reason why the street's in the condition it's in. And so the, the concern is our own, our own infrastructure less than it is private dwelling 
infrastructure. Am I right? to prepare for this. And so citizens and, and uh, lot owners on the street are not likely to be impaired other than if we have a break in our water or sewer line. Sewer's less likely to break anyway, but because those sewer lines that go, or the laterals, have, have for the most part when they, been replaced or repaired over the last 25, 30 years. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Good. Anything else for Chad? Go ahead there, Jeff. No, I, you, you made the point, Your Worship, and it was simply about the cost differential between uh, doing the full job, ex excavating the full street and replacing all the underground services on a stretch that we're able to pay for, you know, 90 to 100,000. <clears> you could easily anticipate spending 3 million to do, to do the bigger job. So. Uh, you know, if we get if we get a reasonable uh, lifespan out of that hundred thousand, it's it may be ten years that um, that people enjoy a, a a reasonable smooth surface on Forest Street that they wouldn't have otherwise had if we waited until we had the millions of dollars and it was time to do the underground work. So, I think it's a good decision, a good investment, but um, we can't deny that yes, we have old infrastructure under streets that were that we're paving in some cases. Good. Good stuff, thank you. <clears throat> planning department. Got anything there for planning? Any questions there, we're good? Asset management and infrastructure. <clears throat> Um, finance department, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. How well are we doing? So the audits are, are, from our perspective, are basically completed. I've gotten uh, statements on uh, the Waste Park and the Mariner Center. I know I have draft statements this week for the town and water. And they, uh, they consolidated as talked about or discussed before will be delayed a bit because of the airport. Um, I've contacted uh, Municipal Government Affairs uh, to let them know uh, that good chance that we'll all be late putting our statements into their system. And when I called to let them know that, uh, they said, oh, this is the same thing we talked to our gov and municipality about as well. So they know that the three of us uh, potentially will be. That's on. No, that's on. That one's on. Yeah. So they are aware that we could be a week or so later reporting those. And they're not overly concerned about that. Um, they don't dig into all 52 statements come October 1st. And from what I understand, talking to, talking to them and some uh, co-workers co and other municipalities, there's still municipalities that don't report till 
November, December as it is. So uh, I've, I and the town, we've been on time for the last 15 years. So, uh, but it is what it is and we'll get them in as soon as we have them. Good. Go ahead, Jim. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Jerry, on page one of your presentation this morning under expenses, Protective services last year were 1.76 a, and at this point this year they're 1.16. Is that just a function of the? Yeah, the biggest bills? thing there is just the uh, the second quarter bill for the RCMP was paid last year in August. Okay. Uh, we just received that in September this year. <coughs> so. Anything else for Jerry? You good? Okay. Thank you. Recreation. Frank. Any questions for Frank? <clears throat> Good summer. Good stuff. One, one uh, recent uh, item. Our Yarmouth County Trail Development Association has won a provincial award. <laughs> they won the uh, Recreation Nova Scotia's Mayflower Award. Wow. for outstanding community group service, uh, an organization that meets the, uh, the goals and priorities of recreation delivery in the province. So uh, the Yarmouth County Trail Development Association just hot off the press yesterday, it was announced. So there'll be uh, some press releases that'll be released and uh, they'll be accepting the award at our conference in October in Truro. You going to that conference? Good. Yeah. Just gonna make sure we're okay. You're up. Uh, thank you, Worship Frank. Maybe a quick update on the uh, the boat the boathouse and um, a little. I'll give a little talk, maybe about uh, less than twenty seconds about the little road trip myself and Linda Gallagher and yourself went on to the valley. But there just a quick update on the boathouse. Um, as probably most of you are aware, there is a community group that's uh, uh, started uh, with interest in building a local splash pad. So one of the things, once uh, I attended a few meetings of the group, uh, the Deputy Mayor Phil Mooney and, our, and Chair of our Recreation Committee expressed some interest as well. Um, early on when the group formed, we had talked about doing a road trip. Um, we did one towards the end of August, and we saw f four parks in the valley, and uh, I had arranged for uh, tours from the recreation departments and public works folks um, to give us a little bit of a tutorial on good things, bad things, and uh, we took some photos, saw some things we liked, saw some things we didn't like, and uh, uh, Linda Gallagher is the uh, chair of that committee that uh, is spearing that community group initiative, so they're continuing to meet and and ongoing plans. Yeah, we had a meeting the other night, Your Worship, and I think the 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 group is going to ask for municipal representation on their group. So they're going to be sending a letter to the town of Yarmouth, the municipality of Yarmouth, and the district of Argyle, and I'll be more than willing to serve in that capacity as being chair of, of Yarmouth uh, Rec and. Um, I think they've kind of narrowed their focus and they're really, they've got some numbers together so they'll be coming uh, maybe the next time, Frank, if we can put it on the agenda for the next rec meeting, put those on, maybe they can make a presentation and then there'll be requests coming out of recreation to the units probably. They'll just give them, an, give, they'll give us an overview of what's going on, so. Awesome. Uh, Good stuff. So then a quick update on the Milo renovation project. Um, we're a little bit behind in our planning. Um, I don't think that's uh, a detrimental thing. Um, we recently attended an accessibility workshop here at Town Hall, um, and uh, one of the things that was not on any of our accessibility audits or radars or checklists um, came up in that session around adult change tables. So we are planning to have all-inclusive washrooms um, in, in our renovation, but we did plan for change room stalls, 
but we did not plan, and we did ch plan for child changing areas, but we did not plan for adult changing areas. So we are altering the plan a little bit to accommodate for those with disabilities that need uh, a larger, more heavy duty uh, space um, to make the building fully accessible. Uh, we do have an accessibility audit that we're following with the renovation and um, we're looking at not a whole lot of changes to the office space. The office area space is, is going to stay very similar. Uh, we will have a locked storage space as part of that. The uh, inclusive washrooms, change rooms. Um, one of the uh, one of the things that when we were on actually when we were on the splash pad uh, splash pad tour, um, the town of Kenfield had a recent had recently renovated their uh, their pool house, changing room, and washrooms, and the uh, the look of their building looks very similar to the footprint of Milo's building. And one of the things that I really liked with their concept was that it was a very open space concept with some benches and, and low seating areas, which we're going to accommodate into our, uh, our plans, which would fit perfect for mornings when we're doing lessons, that kids come in, have lots of room to move around, they sit on the benches, get ready uh, to start their, their lessons. So um, we are going to be taking the oil heat um, out of Milo. Uh, we have an oil tank that is within three feet of the water's edge. That's always been a, uh, a, a scary thing for me. Um, oil, even though it's, it's a uh, fully uh, insulated 25-year uh, double-walled tank, there are still lines there that could go and we could have an environmental disaster. So we are taking uh, oil out and, and looking at uh, going with more electric heat, possibly another uh, heat pump. We have installed heat pumps in the upstairs of the building. And uh, the floor, the floor will also be redone with an anti-slip material just for the nature of the building, people coming and going from the swimming area, from the boating area. Good. Go ahead, Cliff. Oh, wait a minute. Did I just press the it's wrong me. button? Oh, it's go me. ahead, Jeff. I just wanted to go back to, uh, you said the, the Trails Association won the Mayflower Award? Yes. So back in my recreation days, that was the most prestigious award that a recreation group could win in this province. Hmm. There's, uh, I guess, yeah, so it is a, pr I, I took it as a pretty prestigious award. Um, there were, f there are four main awards. Um, I don't think Recreation Nova Scotia listed them in any major okay. priority, mm -hmm. but I think as far as community awards, community group awards, it is the one of four major yeah. provincial awards. So I think, Your Worship, it might be the kind of thing that you want to write them a letter and just congratulate Absolutely. them on that. Yeah. So I did just speak with Ron Day today because he got the call yesterday um, telling them that they had won and um, Ron was just asking about how is the word getting out? Can we let our members know? So there, there will be media releases coming out very shortly. Okay. Cliff's going to make that a motion, I guess. Go ahead, Cliff. <laughs> So first, I'll make it a motion that we do communicate the town's congratulations with respect to that. The second thing is on the trails. Uh, Frank, is there any activity going with your department trying to assist them to get the uh, connector for the two trails here in Water Street? As is far there as anything your 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 group, your the department, the rec, rec department is doing with the. Trails Association to try and fulfill this demonstration project for a connector to connect the two trails on Water Street? No. Was there at any time any activity on? Did they no, see? I think we left that with the, with the town council to deal with because of the street issue. Yeah. Um, I don't believe we've, we've sent any letters of support in that vein. Uh, the only conversation that I've had recently um, is 
uh, we are looking at our section of trail um, in Yarmouth County becoming part of the Great Trail, which was formerly known as the Trans-Canada Trail. Yeah. And in those meetings, uh, it was brought up that the eight to 10 pilot sites where uh, trail groups have allowed access, ATV access through towns and villages, um, the, the report was that those pilot sites have been positive and they're looking at extending those pilot sites and, and extending more opportunities for more communities to become a pilot site. So I think Yarmouth was identified as a possible site. Yeah, we if, were on the if, list and if, then they took us off. If the town so chooses to become a pilot test for that, that link mm -hmm. through town. So was it our fault? Like I, I, I've been quite vocal on behalf of the police advisory committee and the chief that, at the time in uh, opposing that because of complications with the Motor Vehicle Act and so on, but I've done a fair amount of research. I mean, these people now, when they operate those vehicles, are subject to the same checks that a motor vehicle operator is. Mm -hmm. They have to be insured. And if you make sure that the operators of the vehicles are carrying all those things, there's really, I mean, you can drive a motorcycle with two wheels on, right. on Main Street That's legally. Right. Why the hell can't you drive in on it? So I've had a change of heart on that, and I'd certainly like to see, uh, see that if we can assist the trails group to move ahead with that project, that pilot project that's going ahead in a number of other areas. So I don't know whether we could get the rec department to try to coordinate with them and move that or how we should do it, frankly. We're just going to give permission. Go ahead. Worship. I just, I'm just leaving it out there for discussion. Yeah. You might be able to go ahead, Jeff. No, I, I think that uh, if it's council's desire to support that initiative, uh, using every, every angle, including recreation, to support it uh, makes perfect sense. I, I'm about to hit send on an email to you, to you all uh, on council. Uh, I, was, I had the opportunity to be in Newfoundland a couple weeks ago, and you'll recall at the last police advisory meeting, uh, the, the acting staff sergeant, um, uh, Paul Pittman, had advised that Cornerbrook has something like a 30 kilometer stretch where ATVs are allowed to use the roads to connect the, the Great Trail. Well, that happens to go right through downtown Cornerbrook, and I found myself uh, grabbing a coffee at Tim Hortons and noticed the signs in downtown Cornerbrook, right on the busiest street in the downtown uh, with the ATV trail. And you and like talking about a four lane road through the center of town. The other thing that uh, council or sorry, deputy mayor might find interesting is in the photo that I have in the snap of the, of the picture, uh, sorry, the picture of the sign on this busy downtown street, their, their little train was going by. They have a train that, that takes um, tourists around parts of their town. And I know that was something that, that I think the deputy mayor was fairly fond of in our, in our Water Street uh, plan. And they actually have one in, in operation and the thing was full of people. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I, I'll send you that picture, but you can see just how, and, and by the way, the report from Paul Pittman was that they have not had a single complaint. Not a single complaint. From Cornerbrook, and that's, that's a busier street than we have anywhere in Europe. So what's our next step before you turn your light? What's our next step? Like this has just been ongoing for years, and we're missing a lot. Like we are missing I, well, I think the, a lot. Your Worship, I think the, the next step is, is to uh, uh, get yourself a, an audience with the minister, with, with, uh, with Mr. Hines, and, um, and make, the, make the case uh, that, that you want it and you're not leaving his office until you get it. Well, then you're sending in the right person. You're sending the right person because... The, the one positive thing that that I found myself saying at a few meetings, especially around this great trail initiative where we're trying to connect all of Canada with trails. The town of Yarmouth is connected in terms of trails, in terms of non-motorized. So it's just the motorized piece. So when the great trail does come through here and we have that total connectivity across yeah. Canada, it's it's important. we are connected, it's yeah. just that we're not connected 
with ATVs. We do have a walking cycling network that is totally connected. So, um, ATVs yeah, if there's is any, where the money is. That's where the money is. And that's that's <laughs> what that's where the tourism yes. aspect is. That yeah. um, a lot of the groups on the South Shore have asked me, when is it going to get connected? Because we'll be bringing bike tours down and having lunch and, and doing all that. So okay. anything I can do, I'm, I'm yep. email Thank or phone you. call I, away. I'll just I'll make a note to go to the minister's office. Go ahead, question. So on that point, Your Worship, uh, I think uh, the rest of the council's heard the discussion. I make a motion that the town council um, uh, revise its position with respect to the connector trail on Water Street and investigate and uh, attempt to pursue in conjunction with the Trails Association and the Department of Recreation of the town and county uh, an initiative to see that established. And I'm doing that, so that's the motion, and I'm doing, in support of that motion, we have uh, an acting chief now who is aligned because of bringing yeah. it up at yeah. police advisory committee with uh, our wishes to do so, and because there's been a significant change with the initiative that Frank is talking about here to get the Canada Trail system integrated to the whole thing. So that's my motion, Your Worship. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Oh, sorry, Don. Just that. I think uh, the quicker we get on to it, um, uh, sometimes we it, it lags on. Yep. I think the quicker we uh, promote this initiative, I think is is better for our citizens and better for the for the trail people. So I, I'd support it, but I think it needs to be a priority. Yeah, we, I can do that right away. But just so we understand, uh, it's been batted back and forth. Right. It's our road. It's their road. It's our road. It's their yeah. road. Yeah. So I just need an answer. Yeah. Right. Okay. Good. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Contrary. Motion carried. Thanks, Frank. Um, economic development, Natalie. Your Worship, I've provided my uh, report. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to, uh, to answer. Anything for Natalie? Yeah, there's a lot. Thank you. A lot going on. Okay, uh, business request for decision town of Yarmouth filming guide. Sorry, Nat. Go ahead. I need to get the steps in. <laughs> okay. So I'll <coughs> I'll just just uh, describe the key concept if you don't mind. Sure. So the town of Yarmouth has had requests from film production companies to film in the town. Recent attention from the filming of The Lighthouse in various documentaries such as TV Ontario's Striking Balance and Quebec's Unique TV um, will be released in 2019. The filming of The Lighthouse has, has had a significant positive impact to the local economy, even with the film location at the Fort Cape Horseshoe Lighthouse. The town's businesses benefit benefited with increased revenues in overnight accommodations, construction labor, hardware supplies, food and beverage, and other essential goods. Screen Nova Scotia has reviewed the town of Yarmouth's filming guide and is supportive of the guide to help with the film production site selection process. A film guide would provide the necessary information, process, and contacts for film production companies to approach the town with their film requests. So, um, it is staff's recommendation that council adopts the town of Yarmouth filming guide. I have no problem. I just do they just come to the town? Like, why isn't this a regional? So, so two separate. All right. Somebody making that motion? Go ahead, Jeff. So the, the purpose of the application is if they're actually going to be filming on locations within the town. 
So Cape Forshoe was was used in in the last in the okay. film, uh, the lighthouse, and uh, you know it impacted that site. It it restricted access to that site. It wasn't during peak tourism season, so it wasn't a huge issue. Now. If somebody decided that they they wanted to to use our heritage district as a setting mm -hmm. for for a film, or wanted to use our beautiful downtown as a setting for a film, uh, you know, we would be we'd be pretty excited about that. But it would also be quite disruptive to people who who uh, live and work in those areas. And so, what this is doing is it's kind of putting in place an application that it would come to council and you'd consider. You know, both sides of the of the situation, and maybe uh, insist or or negotiate with staff uh, and the and the producers uh, certain terms and conditions under which they'll be undertaking the filming. Um, you know, I know uh, CAO in in Windsor, uh, his his personal home was used as a as a location for for filming not so long ago, and and you know he mo basically moved out of his house to allow this to occur, and he was quite happy to, but it also affected the neighbors because there were, yeah, exactly. there were trucks and people exactly. and all this in a residential area. And so it's just, it's, it's a, you know, we're enthusiastic that we might, that we might be a location for, for filming uh, in the future, but we also have to uh, look out for, for all the people in the community and how they might be affected. And so this just allows us, now if, if they were to use the lighthouse again, the impacts on the town are all positive. It's all business yeah. it's and always, it's all positive. Yeah. Um, if they are located filming in, in, in within the town, then there will be some inconveniences as well, and we just need to be aware of those and understand there's there's proper um, communication with our traffic authority and, and and so on. If they're going to be blocking off streets or need to block off streets, if it's going to affect our, our business community or people's everyday lives, we just need to be considerate of that. And this puts in place a mechanism by which we will know what their plans are, and we will have that communication. Perfect. Good. Jim? Not unlike our street resurfacing, the upset that it might cause for a short period of time. I think this would be an interesting challenge for future councils when this opportunity arises to make uh, the right decision at the time. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Okay, so a motion to accept this? Did we move in yeah. second? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, contrary? Motion carried. Thank you, folks. Uh, Collins Street parking lot. Okay. Um, Your Worship, there was a motion at the uh, uh, last council meeting to develop a, a plan, a concept, a plan for the redevelopment of the Collins Street parking lot. What, what I'm suggesting to council is, is that that's not a bad idea, but we don't have a budget for it allocated, so that idea perhaps should be referred to budget. In the meantime, we have uh, a lot, a separate lot that is within the parking lot that it's our intention to use as parking lot in the near term that is, that is a gravel uh, area. And we would like to get that capped with asphalt and get it painted for parking. So it's easier to maintain and the gravels don't continue to go, go into the street. What we're proposing to do is, is do that in the immediate term and do the concept and redevelopment in, in a slightly longer term uh, time frame. Yes. To accept the recommendation? Second. Who's the chair? <laughs> He's the chair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't. Yeah, I'll make the motion. I'll second. Or, or second. No, head counselor Foot. Well, I just, this observation, I guess that's the end of the uh, YARC project on that site, is it? Well, I would think we were quite critical of the ARC paving, using federal money to pave their parking lot over there when we were trying to do a project. I'm just wondering, isn't, isn't that what it says? If we're going to redevelop, if we're going to fix that parking lot up properly and spend the money we need to spend to do it, I guess we're saying we're not going to build the ARC on that site. Yeah, I guess if you, oh. Plus, yeah, plus, no, no, you're, you're, you're somewhat on, you're, you're on the right track, but I, it's, I think my feeling uh, the money that we're going to spend, uh, because even if they said tomorrow we're going to build a new arts facility on Collins Street, it's still going to be five or six years. But in the meantime, 
let's fix it up uh, for the amount of money, then what happens after that happens after that. But I think it's a short-term fix because I, I spend a little time going in to visit uh, my former workplace and it needs to be, that parking lot does need to be realigned. My question Uh, so I so moved and seconded. Moved and seconded. Question. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Go. Okay. Ferry terminal project. Oh, who had their light on? There uh, thank you, Worship. So you have <laughs> in front of you on your desk, you should have a, uh, a paper report on the ferry terminal redevelopment. So uh, there has not been any um, activity visible on the site as far as uh, redevelopment goes. And we're starting to get some questions about that, but I wanna let council know that, that the work uh, has been ongoing. So we did engage, um, first of all, we got all of our funding in place and our terms of reference got organized around the project. We, we have uh, engaged our prime consultant, CBCL. They have reviewed the, uh, the concept for redevelopment. They have engaged with CBSA and, and Bay Ferries to understand exactly what their priorities and concerns and so on are on the project. So the first tender package is, is, uh, is under development and we're hoping will be issued in the near term and that will be for demolition of various structures. Um, it will also include uh, roofing of the terminal building, something that, uh, that needs to be done and looking at the building envelope in general and the yard fencing. Um, so based on high level estimates from CBCL and looking at all of the infrastructure down there, uh, this project is the first phase of renewal of the Yarmouth Ferry Terminal. I don't think any of us were under the impression that there wouldn't need to be uh, subsequent phases in order to completely uh, renew that, that property and, and buildings. Uh, however, um, in, in reviewing the, the high level estimates that were provided earlier, we may be able to get less achieved in this first phase than we originally anticipated. So we're awaiting uh, some additional uh, information from, um, from CBCL around the building and, and the work that's required there. Once we have that, the budget will be, will be refined, the scope will be uh, reviewed, and a recommendation will come back to Council in terms of <coughs> uh, the, uh, the scope that we will try to achieve within this, this project. Uh, that will need to be approved by our funding partners, but I've already had some conversation there and they understand uh, that, that there will be some modification requested of them and that we'll be requesting a quick turnaround. The other thing that we've requested from the, um, the provincial government is an extension on the time frame to get the work done. So because we've, we've, been, um, we've had to review the original plan, it's take, it takes some time to get these things moving, and they put us on a very short time frame when they awarded the money. What we asked for was an additional construction season, one more year, because if we have that year, it takes a lot of pressure off of the, uh, off of the engineers and ultimately the contractors to get the work done and, um, within the time frame. We don't want to have a situation, or, and remember, we're, we're, we're renovating and operating um, facility and we don't have the construction season to work with. The construction season it happens to also be the tourist season. We can't be in there doing work when the ferry is operating. So we're asking for an additional year. But what we're getting is uh, the off season, not necessarily the prime construction season. So we're saying to the government that we need that extra year uh, in order to complete the work and not put ourselves in a situation where it could be impacting on the ferry operation. So um, they seem quite open to, to hearing that and we're, we're providing them some additional supporting documentation around cash flow and hopefully we'll get that approval. So overall uh, on, the, on the third page of the, of the report or second page, I guess I've got two copies here stuck together. 
Uh, there is a, um, a financial status, uh, estimates by CBCL. So you remember we have $9 million to work with. And uh, based on the original scope, it's, a, it's, it's approximately double that based on what CBCL expects in this market. So obviously there's going to be some scope change and that's the order of magnitude we're talking. There's a fair amount of conservatism built into this, these estimates. Um, you know, we're not in Halifax, we're in Yarmouth, and, and our experience is that uh, it's, it's more expensive to do things in Yarmouth. Um, you know, materials come from outside, adds transportation costs. Sometimes contractors come from outside, and, uh, and that, uh, that ends up driving costs up. And so this, there's a healthy level of conservatism, but uh, we, will, we have $9 million to work with. We'll use it all, but uh, we're not going to uh, promise the moon and only get uh, uh, come up come up short. Any questions, Your Worship? Go ahead, Jim. Jeff, do we spend any of our cash flow paying current bills, or do we get, or do we already receive money, um, advance money to pay the? what we've been doing so far? So the way it works is we make, uh, we make progress claims based on um, you know, uh, spending money and, and time. So uh, we haven't spent a lot of money. We haven't flowed a lot of cash yet. The only money we've spent so far has gone to the, to the engineers, and it hasn't been a lot of money. I don't know, Jerry, if you know the number off the top of your head. Right around 100,000, so very little of the 9 million. But we do have uh, the ability to make progress claims from the uh, from the infrastructure secretariat, and as well, we have the ability to reach out to to our neighboring municipalities and and draw on their commitments. The municipality of Yarmouth's commitment has has a very specific schedule. Uh, Argyle's does not. It's not as large a uh, an amount of money. But I will have a discussion with Alain about cash flow and how he would like to see that flow uh, for their for their interests as well as ours. Good. Um, it's just that uh, we always seem to be paying the bills, and I just want to make sure that it's uh, that we do it as efficiently no and worries. with the least amount of cost to our town. Yeah. Um, am I allowed to ask it on sort of an unrelated question at this point? Uh, are we going to have uh, ferry service uh, next year? Next year, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just. Still don't know if we're not going to have it this year. I guess I get that. I get asked that question every day. No. Anyway. That's a guess. Yeah. Okay. So, Good. I, oh, sorry. if Go I ahead. could just share this yeah. uh, to that end, I, I, I did receive a phone call from the province uh, this week, and they were asking about this project and, and where we were. And so I started by saying that we are working, we have not, we're not waiting. And that was their concern is because there'd been no activity on the ground. They thought, gee, is Yarmouth waiting to see if the ferry is going to run before they start the terminal work? And my answer was unequivocal, no. We have been working along uh, diligently, but it's not stuff that you'll see on the ground in terms of, of things happening yet. Um, you know, and obviously they're concerned that we, that we not impact the, the ferry operation when it does uh, re, restart. And that's our concern as well. So we're all on the same page. Uh, you know, they didn't, they didn't disclose anything additional, so I have nothing more to tell you other than the province is concerned that we, that we will be ready uh, when the ferry's operating. And so that, that, I think, is a very positive signal. And I gave them back a positive signal that this community very much appreciates it and is anxiously awaiting. So I echo uh, Councillor McLeod's concern with the question he asked, but I think $20 million for a ferry terminal, we know uh, that we now own, and probably a similar amount will have to be sent at some time on the other wharves that we now own. Our airport struggles and has for 25 years, $36 million to fulfill the wish list of our people who would like to see that place up and running with full service and all that. And it, we're in the middle of an election campaign when parties are promising everything from full 
pledged Pharmacare to free tuition to, you know, it's a, it, it, and stop and think. Why are we, as municipal taxpayers, paying for these things that once were done by the federal government? Why? I'll tell you why. It's because we have one national program that was established 40, 50 years ago, Medicare, which now consumes more than half of the provincial budget of the province. And so the things that the federal government used to do under their federal mandate that they had, wars, fishing things, all this stuff, are now being forced upon uh, municipal taxpayers. And indirectly, we municipal taxpayers are paying for Medicare, which we're not supposed to be doing. And so we ought to be cautious about those parties and candidates that promise these broad scope national programs that can only lead to more of that kind of downsizing, downsizing down the road. Very, I had a very disquieting conversation with a, a couple from Clare last Saturday. They came down to deliver wood at the house, and they were over there two weeks ago. They're still plywood on the windows. Because they're working inside. Well, it's, it was a pretty hard looking sight from what they, they told me. Anyway, that's, uh, I offer those comments because we need to think about these things. These are huge bills and obligations that are being foisted upon municipal governments. Thanks. Thank you. Go ahead, Jim. I just have, Jeff, one more quick question. Um, we have a rental arrangement with the, uh, the ferry docking at our, and they're paying their rent to us on a regular basis. Go ahead. Uh, Your Worship, yes, we do. And in fact, uh, just before the meeting started, uh, our solicitor had the mayor and I put our signatures on a renewal of that uh, lease. They have been paying, and uh, they're in that respect, they're very good tenants. The shame of it is that they're our tenants. They should be federal tenants. It's, a, it's an international link, but. I assume that's public. Yeah, so um, I don't have the new lease in front of me, but I think the solicitor has it. So the way the, way the deal works is that we have uh, a two-part uh, payment that we receive from, from the operator. One is, is a basic a monthly rent, and the other part is based on throughputs. So uh, if they're operating and they're bringing cars and buses and passengers, we receive so much per bus, person, or, pe or vehicle, and so on. Um, this year we'll receive less because they're not operating, um, but uh, the, the, um, the basic monthly rent they've continued to pay, and they pay 12 months a year for that. How much is the 12-month basic, basic rent? Do you remember? In the new one? Ballpark. Well, I know what it is, but should we be talking about? I don't know. That is well, then if that's a question, contractual, we just maybe don't, in yeah. camera, we should... Well, the reason I'm asking the question is this. About 15 years or more ago, when Scotia Prince was operating, it, it had to pay a lease fee to the then owners, which was Bay Ferries, or leasees. And the rent, I believe, was around $400,000. And I'd just like to compare how much the Bay Ferries are paying to the town for the use of the same facility. I'd, I'd hope it potentially would approximate the amount that they charged Scotia Prince way back then. Just ask the question for that reason. No, no, no we can, find, we can find that out. It's a good question. Okay, are we good? So what do we need to do on this CAO? Anything? Just nope. for information? Okay, and, and Mike, is this going somewhere today? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, ferry terminal project. Okay, for action. The correspondence Department of Municipal Affairs and Housing reproposed amendments to Nova Scotia Building Code regulations. CAO. Uh, Your Worship, I asked our uh, building inspector to comment or to explain <laughs> to me generally what the implications of these changes are and um, the, uh, the 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 answer is, is that right now you may be aware that if you're doing 
uh, some minor repair work to your to your home uh, residential building that is um, under five thousand dollars that maybe a building permit isn't required if there's nothing structural um, what I understand from the building inspector is is that for that class of building the proposal is is that a, a um, if you're just replacing um, existing that a building code will uh, sorry building permit will not be required uh, and the dollar value disappears from the from the from the equation so nothing structural replacing what is there um, no building permit required for commercial buildings um, okay say that again nothing structural if nothing. there's nothing structural and, and it's a nothing, residential building and a residential yeah that no building permit would be required if the amendments are passed. For commercial buildings, uh, the, there would be no requirement for a building permit for renovations that are not structural that are under $10,000. So the, the direction here seems to be to require building permits for less activity um, that eases the burden on, on building inspection, but there's a, there's a, another, uh, implication of this is, is that we're, we're not present and renovations are made to a home or to a commercial building. Um, you know, it, it's, what you don't want is unsafe conditions to, to result. And so, um, I know what their, I think I know what their intent is, but it, it leaves me with a bit of concern as well as the building inspector. So, so I have a question. Um, so there's no permit required and if there's no permit, that means nobody can go in and check. Put your, put your light. Well. I think we can go in and check if there's a reason to go. Okay. But we don't know it's happening, so therefore it, the activity can take place and it won't be checked until something happens, like a deck collapse yeah. during Maddie's graduation year. Oh. Yeah. On, a, on a deck that probably didn't have a building permit. It was self-engineered. Might have cost somebody some money too. So, uh, because it's safety for us, it's safety for us. So, is there a way to make this happen? Because it makes it so much easier for the majority. And then, can we write something that allows us to check? But we don't know. We we wouldn't know if it existed. But. <laughs> So, so the question from Cliff no. is, don't we have to ratify those, right? No, this we is, this is um, a mem amendment to the Nova Scotia Building Code regulations. Yes. So not at this level. We're consulted, so you have an opportunity to speak to it, but it is provincial regulation. <laughs> Do they pay for a permit? No. What's that? I'm just wondering if there's a way to cover off our bases. Because I like this, because it just makes it so much easier. But how do you? There must be a way to say this is how we know. Are you? Did you have your light on? Because you have an answer. What's the question? The question is, how do we get the best of both worlds? How do we say, yeah, okay, we agree. You don't need a building permit, but within the town limits, you at least need to register your changes. 
So I guess let me be the devil's advocate and say, what's the problem with getting a building permit? There's nothing wrong with it. Then, Unless then you're why paying are, for it. Well, okay. To, so, 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 well, they are making it free, in fact, by, by taking out the requirement to get a permit. There's nothing to charge for. But if the issue is, let's make uh, renovation more, more um, inexpensive, the building permit is a very small, a very small nibble at the mm -hmm. edges of that. But you know, we have done things in the past at this table where we have where we waived building permit fees uh, for a period of time. So, Go ahead, Jim. Keep your light on there, Jim. I know, Jeff, that you had discussion, as you've indicated, uh, the last sentence of the letter from uh, Joe Rogers, written comments on the proposed amendments to the regulations are welcome and should be forwarded on or before October the 4th. I thought this was mostly to do with uh, tiny homes. And, and, uh, and that's what I was... Okay, and go ahead, CAO. Your Worship, I'm sorry, I'm speaking about a different amendment, obviously, uh, that Glenn has commented on, but this is a different one and it's based on Tawny Homes. I apologize for the confusion. No problem. So, but I still think that if there's any, you know, you can discuss it further, Jeff, with staff, and if there is a comment, an adverse comment they wish to make, or any comment, they can do that and sort of have, well, you have, I'm sure you have my support, you know, because the, I don't want to be have have it complicated later on, but I'm I, I read it and I'm I was comfortable with it. Uh, I know that if I want to build a tiny home, I have to have a stairway, a right stairway, have to have a railing on it, and all that sort of thing. Whereas now I don't have to, unless you're old like me. You're just middle aged. No, I think if if the um, if you look at the first part of the section two. So these are things you would know, section two, subsection 1.2.1.2, mm -hmm. talks about part nine buildings and all the things that you would not require a building permit for. Replacing roof cladding, replacing cladding similar materials, drywall, insulation, furnace boilers, air conditioning units, so on. Those things, part nine buildings, you would not require a permit. And if you look at the next part, uh, part three, or item three, Interior, inter, interior and exter, exterior non-structural material repairs for maintenance with a monetary value of 10,000 or less. So that is the, the part three buildings are the commercial buildings. So those are the two pieces that Glenn commented to me on that would reduce the requirement for, for building permits. Okay, so that's the part he commented on. The tiny home aspect to this, he, he did not comment on that. So the question is, and, and with regard to those two sections that he commented to me on, is the mayor's question is, well, gee, how do we make it less bureaucratic, cut the red tape, make it easier for people to go ahead and do this stuff um, at the same time as protecting the property owner and future property owners exactly. from poor workmanship and, and shoddy work? And I think the answer is, is that it, that what's the problem with getting, well, my question is, what's the problem with getting a building permit? What's the problem with having somebody look at what you're doing in your home or your building and ensuring that you're meeting the, meeting the requirements of the building code, protecting future owners, future tenants from, from shoddy workmanship? I, you know, if it's about the money, we can deal with, we can change that in our own policies. We can say no, no building permit fees for permits of a certain nature yeah. we uh, can suggest that too when we send but I think the inspection side of it I don't think that we want to I, I'm concerned about getting away from from inspections and, and you know we have situations all the time not all the time but not constantly but we do come across situations where people do renovations with good intention but they don't meet the requirements of the code and we find out after the fact and it's very expensive and inconvenient for them to fix things afterwards. If people come in 
and, and tell us what it is they want to do. They get the guidance of our building inspector and our fire inspector and our development officer to make sure that they do it right the first time and save themselves lots of aggravation. It's, it's, it, people are afraid to come and get a permit because they feel like they're going to be told they can't do what they want to do or they think it's going to be more expensive. You know, we can point them to people who've gone the expensive route and that is the route of having to undo it and redo it later. Inspection, you know, so, so Another that what? site inspection, oh, okay. you know, so I'm just saying that, so you've had a, a good uh, presentation there, Jeff. I would respond to Joe Rogers uh, based on what you've said and with uh, Glenn or whoever you work with upstairs. You know, I think you should, I think you should respond. Should be a motion if you want to do anything with this. Is there a motion required for that or is it just? Yes, whatever, whatever we want him to do, we need a motion to say so. Well, okay, I move to a motion that we um, express Jeff's concerns uh, in discussion with our uh, uh, Glenn Muse and respond to in kind to Joe Rogers uh, before October the 4th. Is that helpful? Okay. Seconder? I guess I'll second it to get it on the table. Okay. Go okay. Ahead. I guess I'll second it to get it on the table, but I, I would still con my concern would be the little man who's always had to get a permit or always had to get something, and I see this is something where they're moving to the the homeowner or the home person trying to make small renovations and somebody coming in looking over their back or questioning them or making them. Um, I, I think they're finally moving in the right direction where they're giving people a chance to fix up their properties without being worried or being concerned about that. I, for personally, that's the way I feel. I know that we have a concern that uh, tearing down or, or fixing it the right way and all that stuff, but we do have to think that they're going to pick a contractor, that they're going to pay money out of their own pocket, that I'm going to try my best to get it up to um, code or standard. I don't think there's that many people that would fit into those kind of categories that are fixing a whole bunch of stuff. But, um, but I just I just worry when we start more permits and people looking over my back and all that stuff when I'm just trying to do a reasonable job. It's, and even if it is a fee, I think that, that the concern is there and our, and our citizens that live here, we, we, we pay a large tax. We, we live in the town for a special reason. You know what I mean? I, I, I just, this is my personal opinion of the way I see the taxpayers of Yarmouth. And uh, we, we do enough. We're, we're crying all the time about roads. And we look at, you know, you just made a, a major investment on resurfacing, and I think that's outstanding. And the reason why I say that is because we can't afford to do the understructure, and then, but we are pleasing a lot of people to see that there's a nice, smooth road now. So at least they think we're doing something as councillors. So my rant on that one is basically that uh, if it, uh, I would support the way the government's going and the initiative that they're doing it right now, by changing it to any other method, I wouldn't support. Okay. I believe in less regulation, not more. I agree with Don. Building spec and re regulation is becoming a real bugbear. You know, sister municipal, uh, municipality, I hear the complaints all the time, sometimes in the law office, about building inspection and the, over, the overreach of the building inspectors and the extra costs and delays that occur as a result. I don't think we have to be the insurer of a citizen's um, decision to go out and make renovations to their house. That's between the citizen and the contractor. We don't have to be babysit every one of these projects, in my view. That is not our function. So a regulation that, in fact, as the CAO suggests, uh, babysits every bit of business that's going on and uh, contracting that's going on in town is, frankly, something we don't need to take on. That's a private matter between the individual who either does the work himself or hires a competent con contractor to do it. If the competent contractor and or himself doesn't do it right well, you took your chances. You got to fix it yourself and pay for it. 
So Doesn't what happens, don't turn your light out, because I, I, I need to understand. So what happens when, when the next person buys it? When he buys it, he should go get a, uh, 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 everyone is advised to go out and get an, a home inspection done. Yeah. It's his problem. We shouldn't get in. It's not our job to deal with that. That is, people are expecting to have this, they want everything bubble wrapped these days. Come on, we're responsible for things like that. What are we thinking, folks? What was the motion? Do you know what the motion was, Lindsay? I don't It was to write a letter, but what's the letter saying? Well, the letter Go letter. ahead and do it or don't? Go ahead, Jeff. The, the motion was with a concern about changing the requirements for the building permit. That was the motion. As, uh, okay, so CAO, if we vote for the motion, This is just confusing. Go, oh, sorry. I just need to know what we're doing. Hold on. Of course they are. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. So, Your Worship, if the motion were to pass, then the building inspector's concerns, as I've conveyed them, uh, would be uh, put down in a letter and sent off to Joe, Joe Rogers. Uh, if the motion fails, then we're done. And we're okay. We're okay. Yeah. Uh, so our responsibility, uh, as as we're told in the MGA, is we are responsible for building inspection, and we adopt the province has adopted the National Building Code. We've adopted the National Building Code, and that's what we inspect to. If the regulations around the National Building Code change, in terms of what requires a permit, then that's what we enforce. I'm okay with that. I'm a, I'm, I think I'm okay with voting against it too. Okay, questions called. All those in favor? All those against? Aye. Okay. Motion defeated. Well, like I say, is that the first time in four years we've defeated a motion? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay, so we're good. 30 Willow Street. There we are. Okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Your Worship, we have a letter from some residents in the Willow Street area, and they're concerned with the property at 30 Willow Street their petition asking the town to take immediate action to remedy these, this issue for the benefit of all of our personal investments and to protect the community as a whole, to preserve the uses we have created and the tax base that benefits everyone from our properties. Um, so the concerns are that the property has suffered the wares of time, and you can read the, you can read the letter and you probably have. Um, their concern, they would like the property to be uh, improved. Um, it, um, it doesn't maybe um, reflect the same level of care and upkeep as, as some of the adjacent properties. Your Worship, you and I have talked about this, mm -hmm. uh, and I talk with staff probably on a weekly basis uh, about this property. Um, because we do get some complaints from, from the folks who've signed this letter and concerns that the, we have had the building inspector visit the property uh, based on a complaint. Uh, this was last year, he went through the property. There's no question that there was some uh, work going on in the property of a destructive nature, um, but uh, nothing that was structural 
and nothing that was uh, concerning from a, from a safety perspective. And so there were no orders that I'm aware of resulting from that. He did also do a, a dangerous and unsightly order uh, a couple years ago uh, where there were some external features visible from the street that were not being upkept. Uh, my understanding from that is that all of those, all of those matters were, were addressed. Um, so that's where we are. There are no outstanding orders on that property that I'm aware of. Go ahead. <clears throat> I drive by the property on a regular basis. regular basis and is it any better or any worse than any other property I've seen in the town of Yarmouth? No. Is it, is it, do I see anything out of the ordinary? No, could it be upkept a little better? Maybe, but somebody might like, might not like the color of my house or the way I upkeep my house or some of the other properties that the Mooney's family has owned in the town of Yarmouth has been, you know, it's all in the eye of the beholder. And, and if you notice that the, if you notice that it's really uh, one, two, three of them come out of one business and two of them come out of another household. So out of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five of them are out of two, two businesses. So uh, maybe we can send a letter back thanking them for their concern and we will continue to monitor the situation and our bylaw and building inspector has, has, uh, has, has visited the, the sites along with what you have said, Jeff. I don't know if we can, maybe if we went in and say, yeah, you guys got to clean it up and you got to do this and you got to do that. Maybe I didn't like the paint color. Maybe they didn't like the paint color across the street. I don't know. It's a, it's a hard situation. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, go ahead. Is that what you're doing, seconding? Second the motion. I have a question. Is that property unsightly? Because the, the I, I understand your point, Deputy, that, you know, paint color is not a, right? That's in the eye of the beholder. But I, as I understand it, and CAO correct me, unsightly is um, in direct correlation with the building's surrounding. And when you go by that building, and it's probably not even the paint, it's just the, the weeds and the, the happy face in the window doesn't help either. But it's, to me, it's unsightly. It's, but I, I can't. I understand that, but do the bylaws give us permission to say somebody needs to fix this up to keep it on par with what else is in that neighborhood? How many more are you going to take on to take back? Somebody's always got the worst well, I don't house. know. Somebody's always got the worst house in the neighborhood. Right? You've got the uh, church thing down in South East Look, we're all Go ahead, Deputy. Oh, am I still on? Yeah, you're still on. Oh, no, uh, no, I don't think I pressed it. I didn't turn it off. But, you know, I, th I think if, if uh, Glenn and Russell monitor the situation and if it gets way out of hand, then we have the resources and, and the ability to take care of it, right? Right now, I don't think it's, uh, um, so egregious that we have to do something about it and as long as we monitor the situation and convey that in, the, in a letter back to uh, the people that are the undersigned um, that's, I think that's that's all we can do well that's part and parcel of the conversation that we just had before this about building permits and all the other things right so there's not much else we can do okay so so first of all we can't we can't base our decisions on whether there's something worse in town. 
We can't do that. We, it's the neighborhood. That's where I'm going. It's that, that group of buildings. What do they look like? And there are worse in that neighborhood too. I understand that. I, I'm just saying like we, it's, it's a hard one. It's a hard one because of all the work that's gone into that that whole block and people are coming in and purchasing maybe, the buildings and maybe fixing them up. If and they, got the maybe uh, we have that Collins P. Heritage District, uh, if they have the feelings that they uh, should be upgraded or something else should be done, maybe that should have been part of the... Uh, but Heritage is on the <clears throat> other side of the street. That's right. Maybe they should have included that portion in the district. Maybe that's what we need to do then. But that's going to be a long and arduous process. It's all right, at least it's a process. I think if we keep Glenn and Russell uh, appraised and they can have a periodic update, um, I know we'll be, I know we'll be getting other letters in the future from from the same people. So they'll be holding their fingers to the fire. Okay. So what's next? Did we make a motion? I made a motion to send a letter to the. You seconded. Okay. Questions called, all those in favor? Aye. Contrary, nay. Okay, we're good. Attorney General Justice Readditional Officer Program. Is that you? Go ahead. Yeah, that's, that's uh, I think it's more for information. I don't okay. know uh, that there's any action required by council. It could be referred to the to the uh, police advisory, right. yeah. I make a motion, Worship, that that correspondence be referred to the police advisory committee to be considered at the next uh, meeting, whenever it's scheduled. Second. Um, funding is approved 2019-2020 provincial budget. Budget. Okay. We just don't want to make sure all the money's not spent before we get it if we want any. We get it, just comes. Get it anyway? Yeah. Okay, good. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Hello, Arthur. Hello. Welcome back to town. Okay. Dedication Sprucewood Playground. Your Worship. Go ahead. So, Your Worship, uh, the request is uh, uh, from a family who, is, who has lost a child, and their suggestion is that perhaps a playground in town could be named. Uh, Your Worship, this is exactly the sort of situation, uh, tragic situation, that has given rise to our community asset donation program, yes. uh, where, we, where we have um, public assets, whether they be trees or benches or or other things that, that we value and, and makes the community a little better, that they can be donated uh, in honor or in memory of, uh, of persons. And we have several examples in the park immediately ne next door, as well as other parks in, in town. Um, I think that is, is, is an appropriate answer. If you're looking for a response to this letter, I would suggest that that is one option that you can consider. Good. I agree with that. Okay, what do you think, folks? 100% yes. Okay, want to someone make a motion that we can get back to these people and send a letter and advise that? Are you okay with that? Because you brought it forward. Yeah. Okay, moved. Seconded. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary. Motion carried. Uh, Candy Cane Lane Festival grant request. Go ahead, CAO. Uh, Your Worship, this is the Christmas festival that uh, we spoke at uh, council a couple months ago. Came forward as an idea to have kind of a static parade in, in the center of downtown. Um, an opportunity for the community to celebrate uh, the Christmas, the beginning of the Christmas season in a kind of different way. Uh, in the past, we have uh, had a budget that we've provided to the organizers of our, of our Christmas parade. That was just a, just under a thousand dollars to get this event off the ground. They've they're forming a, a separate society, and they're requesting a grant of twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, some of the things that, uh, that they were anticipating doing this year, as they say in their letter, uh, are a little more expensive than they had they had thought, and they're looking for uh, some grant from the town of Yarmouth to to help offset costs. Good. 
Go ahead there, Deputy. No. No, I'll, I'll make a motion. We accept. We uh, granted the twenty-five hundred dollars, Your Worship, for the request. But if you notice, uh, the two most expensive items, Your Worship, are festival insurance, is eight hundred dollars, and directors and officers insurance is nine hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. So, out of the twenty-five hundred dollar budget, uh, seventeen hundred and fifty dollars is insurance. So is there a way, Jeff, I know we've had this discussion several years ago with uh, director's insurance and with uh, event insurance, is there, is there a policy in the town of Yarmouth that would cover that? I know we did, had this discussion several years ago, I think even when uh, Councillor Langell was at the table. Well, our rec department was doing this nominally. I think Where's Frank? He's right there. Go so on up for a second, it. Frank. Oh, okay, yeah, get... Jeff may have a, so, have a... so there's a couple things. Uh, referring back a few years ago, we had in place a society uh, that had insurance that was covering several events. Well, that really didn't work. It, it, it put a Band-Aid on the situation, but it wasn't a very good Band-Aid because come to find out is that the, the insurance really wasn't valid. That society did not have control of those events. And, and so the insurer would say we can't continue to do that you don't have control of those events so we had the discussion with the with the organizers of this uh, festival and we said look because uh, they were concerned about the insurance costs and we said look the only way that this could become something like a Yarmouth recreation event is if Yarmouth recreation has control right they have to have the ability to control what you're doing in order to ensure that that it is safe if you're willing to give up control not that you couldn't be involved not that you couldn't be you know, working on it with all the same passion and everything, but you just wouldn't have the same level of control. And their decision was, you know what, they want to do this and they want to have control. They want to do this as, as their event. So that's the cost of doing it as a separate, separate organization. You need to incorporate and you need to have your own insurance. Like my house insurance doesn't cover your house. That's right. right? You come live in my house, you're covered under that insurance. Right. So that, this, is, this is the bottom line. I see Frank approaching the microphone, so he might have some additional information. But we did, we did meet with the organizers, and we suggested that they go through uh, Recreation Nova Scotia. The, that Recreation Nova, go ahead, Frank, you speak to it. You know more about it. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say, that I had the same similar conversation with Barb. Um, and I suggested that if they become a member of Recreation Nova Scotia, they may get discounted directors insurance. and liability insurance and event insurance so um, I think they got an initial quote and they were kind of blown away for a two-hour event on, on how expensive it was and I've just reached out with some of the um, networks I guess that I have to see if we can work to get that more reasonable for a two-hour event where there's no traffic other than other than foot traffic Maybe I'll change motion up to $2,500 in case there is a change in the, the yeah. insurance aspect of it. Jerry, do we have your money? Okay. I can't see, like $2,500, it's, it's pennies considering the amount of the, what this is going to bring and, you know, go ahead, CAO. Thanks, so I'll Frank. just add this from our conversation as well. You know, they, they are intending to go look for corporate sponsorship for yeah. part of this, but they don't know how much that will be. And so what I, what I said to them, and I'll say to you, is, is that they should, they should request a grant. Up right. But if they happen to end up with money in their, in their bank account at the end of this year, that means they're looking for less next year. Next year yeah. Right. They yeah. talked about, you know, should they give it away? And we said, well, you know, council doesn't really like to give money to organizations so they can turn around and give it to somebody else. If they give you money, they're going to want you to use that money to hold your event. And if you have a surplus, use that for next year's event and ask for less in future years. Well, we suggested they because, you know, well over half of the people will come from outside the town, so they will probably go out there and ask as well, which is fair. So, um, okay, you're good with up to 2,500? Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead, Cliff. Well, what we're doing for the sake of control is giving the insurance companies a gift because, frankly, there is another way to do it but for the assistance by the group that they being whatever. I don't, 
think that's what they, I don't think they, did they insist on that? They didn't insist on it. We just said, we don't do events. Because if we, if we take it, then we have everything from Shark Scramble to Sea Fest and everything in between. We don't want, I, that's just my opinion. We do not want those to be town events. This is, I mean, oh, way too much. It's gotta be a better way of doing this. It's ridiculous. You gotta be an entity you could put together that would be a tent that would take all those in. Yeah, but it would be a town event. It would be a town entity. Well, we don't that, want them. It, 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 no, well, all right, I'm, I'm I gonna lay off on, I'm gonna vote for the thing, but I just think it's changing. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. So, I mean, one way that, that these groups could handle their insurance issue, I suggest, would be to get together, mm -hmm. right? So if you're, yeah. if you're Christmas but festival not, people met with yeah. your Sea Fest people and met with your Shark Scramble people mm -hmm. and so on, uh, it's not gonna be, you know, one plus one equal, plus one equals three. It's gonna be one plus one plus one is probably gonna equal one and a half, yeah. right? Yeah. Gonna, there's gonna be some economies of scale because as Frank said, you're buying insurance. It's, it's an annual policy <clears throat> they're doing one thing for two hours, right? So there, there are economies to be, to be had here. It can be a discussion there, yeah. What, what does Jay Strong do for her, like? <clears throat> so I will say as someone who's organized a lot of community th things, that's the biggie for everything. Like the Parade of Lights would have been insurance this weekend we have liability insurance we have a softball so everything we do is insurance 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 yeah. 500 here 700 here 1000 here so if there would be some way that we could come together to help or facilitate it it would be better because I think that does discourage sometimes people wanting to do events because just to get over the hurdle of insurance sometimes is you know makes it not worth it so so the cliffs point doing it better you don't necessarily you're not talking about the town taking it on you're saying if they got together, yeah. So <clears throat> maybe the other piece is we could encourage those groups to get together and and see what happens. Go ahead, Frank. Um, during the Mariners Rib Fest, when uh, they were organizing, Wayne Hamilton and I had had talked, and Wayne had that in uh, his vision that the Mariners Rib Fest Society or Committee could be uh, an organization that could deliver a lot of those types of things for other groups as an umbrella. Now, I, I'm not sure if that's gone any further, but around the time at the, at the Rib Fest, that was him and Keith Condon's vision that this could be an ongoing thing. I'm, I haven't talked to Wayne about that since then, but yeah, that that's the only be, other yeah. other group yeah. that I was thinking of when you were talking about an umbrella group for community events. That's, that's yeah. the, I just thought I'd mention. Yeah. Um, What's that? Yeah, 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 absolutely. We just can't take it on. Okay, all right, so are we good? Up to 2,500, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary, motion carried. Okay. The ACRO donation request. <clears throat> so that one is uh, their annual fundraiser. Sponsorship, bronze level 250, silver 500, which includes two tickets, and gold, which is 1,000, four tickets. Um, sponsors will be recognized on all printed material. So, what's your wishes there? Your Worship, I'll make the motion that the town of Yarm sponsor a uh, bronze level <coughs> membership for two hundred and fifty dollars. Moved and seconded. Question. Did you have? Some, did you want to no, say? No. Oh, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary. Motion carried. Um, and then. <coughs> Additions, accessible parking. Okay, so I just, uh, CAO, you can help me with this one. We have, um, I'm not going to say a few, I'm going to say a large number of uh, the, the blue tags for accessible parking permits in the windows. 
And I understand that they are directly related to the person um, that needs the accessibility. And what we have right now is an awful lot of people using those parking spots, but the person with the tag is not in that vehicle, which is absolutely not what that is for. So it's an offense. So how do we, is it just, you just have to catch them. I, we have, just have to talk to some Sonny. Okay. I just want to bring it up. And um, yeah, he is. I'm, I'm just wondering if we need to say something publicly. No, we didn't. We, go ahead. Those things are issued by the province under app, by application, and the individual has to get a doctor's certificate and fill in a form and send it yeah. in to register our motor vehicles, yeah. and they're time limited. Yeah. And they have, uh, so the valid ones, I know that Joan has one, and yeah. they're signed on the back, and and uh, they're but, time limited. But Joan has yeah. one. That doesn't mean that you can take her vehicle without her in it and park anywhere, no, right? I but can't. that's what's happening. But it, I think it does mean that I can drive her Absolutely. and park in the space yeah. and let her get out. That's right. Okay. All right. I'll just mention to Sunny again. Okay, B, we're, we're moving. But, um, the priority meeting. We were going to sit down, set a meeting. Um, we want to set a meeting to see where we've come in the past little bit and where we want to go forward. So just for us to sit down, is everybody okay with Lindsay sending out a, yeah. okay? Yeah. Check it out. All right, somebody asked webcam, somebody did webcam. You did webcam? Kelms Wharf. Kelms Wharf webcam. Oh, I did, yeah. Um, Chad's still here. Do you do, are you, do you look after the maintenance down there, your department? Yeah. The webcam's off. And somebody tells me uh, that it went off with a hurricane, right? And when you operate a port, I think there's some kind of regulation that part of your security system that you have to have or something. But right, now, I wasn't aware it was off. Actually. So uh, I believe uh, somebody has reported it to the, uh, to uh, Nestor, oh. Greg. And uh, I just wonder <coughs> when, when it was gonna get fixed because it's a security issue down there. So maybe, maybe you could check with Greg. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah I've reported. Right out? I understand. It so out? it's it's off. It's oh. not on the website right now. Right. Uh, I've reported to the uh, the um, owner of the company that provides that service to us. So okay. uh, he has a local um, person he subcontracts to. That's right. That's good. That's so all. It. That's, that's, it's being worked on. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, window. Yeah, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, uh, we had a presentation here earlier. I think the first one of the day was the beautiful job that the facade committee has done, uh, reinventing and reinvigorating some of the buildings on Main Street. But I still see the one uh, at the old Sobe store slash uh, Pink Barrow Stair building is kind of unsightly. Is there a way, even if they? said they ordered a window and they're waiting for it to maybe have the board properly fit into the window, maybe with a, uh, uh, a painted thing on it. Not maybe not a picture, but just to just paint it and clean it up. It looks like it's just been nailed over and, and it's past the sides and it's been a long time. It's it on our base. There's a lot more people go down Main Street than Willow Street too. <laughs> Well, I understand there's people going in the back door living there. I heard that too. But can we check on that, the, the, the length of time? Because when was the accident? It was this spring, wasn't it? Yeah. Probably took the insurance money, put it in the pocket. Okay. <laughs> is Jeff, and the other thing is, <laughs> Jeff? <laughs> I heard that. Okay. But, no, he won't. <laughs> but Jeff? Yeah, is is there a way under under one of our policies or bylaws that that there should be a uh, set way? Like I know you can you have to board it up after a night or two, but then properly, especially in our, our central business district, properly uh, fix it the way it's it should be at least. 
not as not as tacky as what it is right now because all it is a piece of plywood nailed over a window yeah i'll review that uh with the building inspector he's also the administr administrator of dangerous and unsightly it isn't the only bad one on main street no that's right you know so let's uh, leave it with me i'll have okay. a discussion see what we can do yeah and can we contact the owner to see where the window is in the process or how uh, far along it part, is that'll be part of his undertaking yes. okay thank you very much good okay do we need a motion yeah, do a motion. Uh, motion that we investigate the status of the repairs of the window. Yes, status of the repairs of the window. On buildings. On buildings. buildings. On Main Street. That's right. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. And those, okay, I previewed the additions in camera. We have in camera sure. two items. Okay. Motion we go on camera. You <coughs> well, thank you, Deputy. Let's do that. Arthur, how are you doing? Jeff, there's one more spot there and each one.